Hey gang, Scott here. In this video, we'll take a look at the color grading tool in Lightroom Classic. This is something new that was added uh, mid-October 2020 uh, through you know, Adobe Max and a big splash about this particular tool. It's like split toning, but with a lot more options and control. And it's really nice. I like the way that Adobe's laid this out. So if you are part of the uh, Creative Cloud, any of the plans that have Lightroom, you update, you're gonna get this tool. And it's like split toning, but more. And I'll show you how the classic split toning compares to color grading as we get into the video. But let's first break down the tool itself. So in our right hand panel, we have a color grading option as opposed to split toning. We open that up and there are now color wiggles instead of hue sliders. So you've got a lot more control over where exactly you want to choose that color. I like the color wheel presentation. That's uh, to me more intuitive. And you can show all three. We've got just the shadows, the midtones. That's kind of the new thing with color grading. We can set a particular tint for the midtones, highlights, and you can do things globally if you'd like to. And on the bottom, you'll see a luminance slider for globals, but you can also see blending and balance. Blending and balance are global, meaning they affect all three tones you might, you know, you might choose for shadows, midtones, highlights. So these control the overall combination of the tones. And it is like split toning where you would choose a tint for your shadows, a different tint for your midtones, different tint for your highlights, and saturation for each one, blend them how you'd like to do things, bias things more toward shadows versus more toward highlights. I thought I'd start with showing you what a classic split tone looks like, but in the new tool. So if you've got presets that use split toning, let um, me choose this one golden brown here. So this is doing a split tone, you know, without the split tone, hovering over it. When I click on that, let's pay attention to what just happened in color grading. Uh, a couple of things happened. We have a tone set for the shadows, and if I move into the tool, we can see there's a certain hue, a certain saturation, the luminance hasn't been changed, and the same thing for the highlights. So that was the two controls we had in the old split tone tool. We had shadows, we had highlights, and then we had the blending, which is really the strength of the tint. And for the classic split tone, you push blending all the way to 100. That will give you, you know, if you shadow tint, highlights tint, and blending to 100, that gives you your classic split tone. The balance slider is the relationship between shadows versus highlights. Do I want to have an even split, that slider right in the center, or do I want to bias things more toward the highlights side of the tint or the shadows side of the tint? So in this case, I'm doing a very um, similar tone. You know, the hue is very similar and it's slightly less saturated and more saturated as I get toward the highlights. Yeah, so before that change and after, it just changes the whole mood. So what about working in this new tool, this new color grading world where we have controls for three different colors? How's the tool work? How do we pick things? Let's go through it here. Let's uh, first reset all of these adjustments there. And uh, I like to work with the larger color wheels. We have one for shadows, one for midtones, one for highlights. We've got the one for the global settings. I do tend to work with just the three. Uh, a couple of things about the interface. First is you have your color wheel and you can just take the point. This is your color selection and drag it anywhere you want. And it's happening you know, dynamically, right? I'm looking at the shadows wheel right now. Let's pick something very obvious, like very bright red. And we see the rocks in this scene taking on this tint because that's what's predominantly the shadows in this photo. Uh, a few other controls that we have. We can choose just the color by rotating the color selector kind of around the outside edge. This controls saturation. Notice when I click on that, I get a little connecting line. And if I hold the shift key down, the only direction I can move is more saturated versus less saturated. That shift key is really helpful. Once you've figured out your base tone, you know, the hue that you really want, hold that shift key down and you can adjust things there. And then you do have a control for luminance, you know, how bright is it, how dark is it? So uh, once again, only affecting 
this shadowy area. Uh, I will point out there is a little arrow you can pop open so you can see the individual sliders. So once again, on the outside, that's affecting the hue. Right? The inside, depending on how we work, if I have nothing pressed on the keyboard, I can drag anywhere I want and I can affect hue and saturation. Or I can just move this back and forth on the line to affect saturation. And luminance, you just need to pop down to the slider itself. There is also a little visualize button. If I click and hold it, I can have that disappear for a moment. So I can look at a before and after of what I'm working with. There's one other way to select a color uh, using a color picker. Uh, it's, I find it a little bit awkward to work with because you have to click and hold on it, but it does work. Uh, there's this color swatch here. We click on that. You have some custom colors. Here's the picker. If I click on it and I hold down and I can choose any other color in my photo or even on my screen, if you know, I want it done, I'll pick this blue that's up in the, the histogram. It gets kind of fun to try to pick that because my photo is changing at the same time. But you get the idea. I can pick any color on the screen. So if I wanted to tint the rocks uh, in a similar blue tone to say what's in the sky and give this a very cool feel, I do have the picker available and I can choose other tones. Uh, you have anything on your screen. So you got a different photo, it's fine. If you get your menu bar, I played around picking anything that was on the screen at the time, you have that. But you just have to hold it down your mouse as you click around and do that. Um, let's keep going with this cool direction for the shadows. So we've got this cool tone here and that's all great. Midtones, we can do the same thing. But you can choose a completely different tone, right? So midtones, maybe, let's just push it around. See, what, see what's being affected by the midtones by default. That's kind of like, you know, the, the ocean water as we would expect. So I could make that a little, maybe a little more green than blue. And uh, brighten it up perhaps a little bit, give this a, a little more of a matte feel. We'll go into our highlights. Let's try something. I'm just going to start clicking around a little bit, maybe something a little bit warmer for the highlights in this photo. I'm watching the sky, that's kind of nice. Okay, yeah, we we'll really kind of push that. So you make sure it comes through in the video. You can see things here. So I'm kind of going with a warm cool here, but I have a transition through a greener tone, right? So we have a, a blue tone, a more green tone, and then orange. Looking at that, I'm kind of going from shadows through midtones to highlights. And I have the blending and balance options. I want to point out again, the blending and balance these are for all the different, the, the, the sum total, the sum total of the effect. So to prove the point, let me just push blending to 70, very heavy. As I move to midtones, highlights, notice that blending does not change. The blending is global, right? So even with my view of all three, this is this is where the blending is. And so it's really kind of just smooths out the tones there. You can see as I move blending more toward the right, I'm getting more of the tint. As I move it toward the left, I'm getting less of the tint. Uh, I can particularly notice it in the highlights. And then our balance is kind of classic, right? If I take this toward the left, I am biasing things toward the shadows and midtones. If I take it toward the right, I'm biasing more toward you know, a mid-tone to highlights blend. And for this scene, let me return the blending to default. And I kind of like a little bit warmer. And now let's take a sum total here before and after. Um, I don't know if I like this as a final photo, but it certainly changes the mood quite a bit. Um, I think I preferred the browner tones I was doing with the previous one. Let's go back into our mid-tones and maybe try something more in like a, a, a ruddy orangey type of place before and after. I kind of like that one better, a little, a little more warmth. But now I can also play with bringing the blending back down some so I get more of that coolness in the shadows. So I'm not biasing too far toward the midtones and highlights, giving a little more favor to the shadows. Yeah, pretty nice. And as far as our globals, 
you can you know you can also do a global tint where this will do everything and it can be added on top of, of everything else we've done so you have lots and lots and lots of control over the tinting of your photo and I'm going to take these all the way back down so one more time before and after pretty nice yeah very different feel but this is how color grading works in the new Lightroom and it's uh, that extra control you have with midtones is very very helpful and the color picker that's a, that's a nice thing to be able to pick a color anywhere on your screen so uh, you want to do uh, more of a monochromatic tone and you like one of the colors that's in your photo use that picker and you can now bias things and get a nice smooth grading hope you found the video useful you got any other questions go ahead and drop them below and until next time my name is scott davenport have fun